Maybe we could squeeze one more in. For posterity. Scrambler. I think I showed the scrambler yet, have I? I, I drove it off screen. We've got S here. We sh we've shown all these. We've shown a lot of them. So we're going to show the scrambler. Now I off screen did the full throttle. You notice they all have the same stats. Some are like heavier than others. The full throttle, the classic, the urban enduro, the icon. So not like the classic. Oh, the, the pipes are different. And the like fairing. Uh, the wheel uh, cover. Mm, so we're going to go for. I had full throttle last time. We'll try the urban enduro. Yeah, I don't know if they actually feel any different. I just want a different color. Trying to work out the scrambler from reading this flavor text. It seems to me they're like, we made several bikes and changed the accessories a little bit so that they seem different. Like the full throttle is the flat track one, the urban enduro is the off road one, the classic and the icon are the, the classic and the icon. <laughs> and you're just like, um. And we changed the seats and a few accessories, and you're like, oh. Do they actually feel different? Because the game's not telling me that. Ooh, the game's telling me that they... <laughs> I can do sick jumps. Da, 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 da. So yeah, anime. I've pretty much exhausted that. Uh, yeah, what else have I been doing? That's basically it. Other than boring shit like my job. Occasionally reading. What am I currently reading? Currently reading. Uh, I'm currently reading Freud. Oh, well, that's all I get for mentioning Freud, apparently. So, for some reason, I was reading Niche, and then I found a free book on Freud, and it's about psychoanalysis. Introduction to Psychoanalysis, it's called. And I thought, you know what? A lot of surrealists. I don't really come at Freud from a scientific or psychological route, because I'm not a big fan of science or psychology. Um, I come at it more like an art philosophy route because the surrealists, especially Andre Breton, said that um, essentially they take its whole dream interpretation stuff and use it as an art movement and they often record their dreams and dream diaries and stuff because of that, or they used to. A lot of the surrealists, the original surrealists are dead now because that was a long time ago. Uh, but like, uh, so I'm really just reading up on Freud from a like art perspective, which is a little weird to say, where it's like, I want to see what the surrealists saw in him. And I want to see like what, you know, what, you know, vibes he was giving off in that sense. Uh, <coughs> my cat says meow. put you in this weird Bruce Springsteen double denim thing with the brown boots for the scramblers and I'm kind of like, who boy, that's a lot of denim, a lot of two-tone denim, not sure about that. That's, uh, that's one of those challenges. You get a free Ducati Scrambler, but you always have to wear the two-tone denim or you still take the Ducati Scrambler. <laughs> like, 
Uh, I don't know, man. It's a lot of denim. Oh, he's dead now, so at least he won't be a travesty to fashion anymore. So what was I saying? Yeah, I'm reading uh, Freud at the moment. I'm also reading the entirety of the Buddhist scriptures, or at least the Penguin Classics compilation, which is never the full Buddhist scriptures, because there's too fucking many. <laughs> and a lot of them haven't been translated into English yet, so... Even now. So some of them are like... I'm reading through that. I've read a lot of Buddhist books recently. It's a very interesting, like, religion, so I read up a lot about it. Um, read a lot of stuff by the Dalai Lama and the Vietnamese monk, whose name I always fuck up, Thich Nhat Hat Minh. Uh, I fucked it up. He's really important, <laughs> and um, he has some really great books, and I really enjoyed them. I, in fact, enjoyed his book, I would say, a lot more than I enjoyed the Dalai Lama's book that I read. Um, which was more of an anthology, to be fair, the one I picked up, so I thought, oh, I'm just going to get, like, the Dalai Lama's greatest hits first, and then I'll see if I go into his more, like, back catalogue. <laughs> you know, you want to see, you know, you just want to see what his hits were. And, you know, it was interesting, I did enjoy it, but, like, I preferred the other guy that I was name I can't, I can't say without butchering horrible, horrible. I can't even speak anymore, let's just give up. Now I'm reading the Buddhist scriptures, or that's just what they called this one, but then the editor's note essentially says, hey man, there have been a lot of Buddhist scriptures, and here are only some of them, and you're going to find some elsewhere, and here, and there, and some have a more, like, slant towards saying that, like, the proper original Buddhism is, like, this type of Buddhism, and this type of Buddhism, or, like, the Pali is more important, or, like, this is more important, and it's just, like, just try and keep that in mind, that it's not comprehensive because of that, because there's just a lot of stuff to take in with Buddhism, because it's a religious movement, <laughs> and you're like, ah, oh, okay. It's, it's interesting. A lot of Buddhism is really interesting, so I read up on that a lot. It's always interested me a lot. And when I was in Nepal, I literally just went out and bought like six books on the subject, because they straight up just have Buddhist bookstores. And uh, <clears throat> when I was in Kathmandu, so I was... Um, I just picked up a bunch and was just like, fuck it, I will read all of these. And, yeah, I'm now on the last book, so, yeah, I did pretty well. Obviously, I left the biggest one and the most, like, studious one for last, because that's how people be. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my current reading. I just finished a murder mystery called Murder on the Links by Agatha Christie. It's a Poirot novel that's quite interesting. If you like murder mysteries and you're sick of Sherlock Holmes, um... Started reading a western that I can't at the moment remember its name. It may have been called something that's similar to Pale Rider, but that's a Clint Eastwood movie and it's not based off of that. I will look up that title later and write in the description. Uh, yeah, I'm just kind of pouncing around, seeing what I feel like reading, and just picking the stuff up. If I feel like fiction, I'm reading the western. If I feel like study theology or something, I'll read the Buddhist book. Yeah, stuff like that, yeah. Much excite, am I right? Hey man, I feel like I have a good wide range of reading, I find, because I always just like, I'm not really feeling this. I still got to finish Niche. I got about halfway through Human All to Human. And, uh, kind of stopped, and I need to get back in. And then I want to read Beyond Good and Evil, so... Uh, yeah. 
I really want to pick up another Kafka book. His, uh, yeah, his work's pretty good. I read Metamorphosis. I read a bunch of other stuff. I read The Trial. But I haven't read The Castle yet. Is it called The Castle? Oh, my brain is falling out my ass at the moment. So yeah, I might pick that up if I can find a copy that's not in German, because my German is not that good. Uh, I also want to read Sartre's work on the Kindle store. All of his works in French, and oh, I can uh, read French. <laughs> like, you know. Uh, and more Breton's always welcome, but his stuff's pretty hard to get hold of, actually. It took me forever to get Andre Breton's Nadia. It's a really good book. Very short, but very expensive for me to find it. Uh, I had to, you know, go on one of those sites where they look for it, and it took them about six months. I ordered it in January, and as I was leaving one job, a parcel came, and I was like, oh, good, that did come. And it was literally one of the last days I was there, and they were like, there's a parcel here for you, and I was like, what the fuck is this? And I was like, kind of paranoid. Oh, it's Andre Breton. I want to read his Manifesto on Surrealism and Mad Love. But you trying to find a copy digital or physical of that is hard because they went out of print a while ago. The one I've got that was apparently in print in 1960 and is in ridiculously good condition considering that. <laughs> so I'm like, uh, yeah, a bit difficult. Um, what else did I read? That's pretty much it. Pretty much it at the moment. I need to finish saying before I start saying I'll put else up again. Um, load of stuff on my Kindle that was free or I bought and then just kind of stopped reading halfway through that I need to get back into. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. I also want to read the. Judas Priest lead singer Rob Halford's uh, biography because that came out a while back <clears throat> and I've always been interested in his life because I don't know very much about Judas Priest's life or history. I know a lot about Iron Maiden because I'm a hardcore fan and I know quite a lot about Motorhead and Lemmy because there was a load of films and autobiography stuff coming out recently and Slash for the same reason and Ozzy Osbourne for the same reason. And there was obviously Bruce Dickinson's autobiography recently. <clears throat> yeah. So that was a pretty interesting read, Bruce Dickinson's thing, because he kept his whole family out of it. It turns out, uh, I only found that out recently when his wife died. His estranged wife died recently, uh, Dickinson's wife. And uh, she was estranged because he kind of... Uh, left her and the kids for some girl, some girl who looked a lot younger, <laughs> let's say, and was a hardcore Iron Maiden fan apparently, and I was thinking, ah, okay, a lot of shockers like that recently, I have to admit, I read Slash's autobiography when it came out, which was a few years ago now, and it was still when he was married to Perla. And he's still married to Perla now, but I found out fairly recently that he left her a while ago, and he's back with an ex-girlfriend of his from way back in the 90s that he used to date. And he's like, yeah, he's filed for divorce several times. Once, only a few years after the book came out, and the next in like 2014, but both times they didn't. And it was him fighting for divorce, and I was a bit surprised, because I thought Slash was quite a chill bloke. But, uh, you, you, you never know what happens right beyond closed doors. Um, a lot of this shit, to be fair, a lot of the guys that I see as role models or did growing up, they're rock stars, so they're not exactly great role models for, like, a lot of reasons. But, like, it's hard, like, for some reason it always hits me as a shock when they're, you're writing an autobiography, you think, 
Oh, you normally do that near the tail end of your career or near the end of a major... The, the thing that you were most known for, like Guns N' Roses or Maiden, kind of being around and established for a while and nothing new majorly happening with them. So you're like, oh, okay, nothing's... You know, it's kind of quieted down now. There's not going to be loads more chapters to this story that are, like, really newsworthy. It's just going to be, we're touring until some of us die or, like... Uh, you know, usual promotional meeting stuff, or like, uh, you know, career's kind of over now, or like, you know, maybe we'll do a few reunion tours or something like that, and it's going to be pretty chill, I've kicked the drugs, I've, you know, it's going to be fine, and I'll just live for as long as I live until I die, <laughs> you know, like that kind of thing, and then it's like, oh, like a year after he wrote this autobiography, he left his wife and shacked up with a girl that's half his age, and you're like, oh, <laughs> well, now I feel like this assemblage of like this guy's happily married now and he's totally fine and nothing's gonna change is total bullshit. But you know, these things happen sometimes. Yeah, and I, I, another kind of pseudo role model of mine, Stone Cold. I looked up him because I was having a little research on all of these people because I was like, it's weird, I didn't know that about uh, Dickinson, and I didn't know that about um, Slash. I'll go check out Stone Cold. He's been married four times. And I was like, oh. And they're all to blonde girls who are roughly the same height and similar faces, and I'm a bit like, well, he certainly has a type. <laughs> like, you know. Fair enough. And, uh, yeah, he was very, like, uh, Yeah, there's a lot, like that's a similar thing as well, and I didn't realize he had kids. Yeah, you know, I think it's like you think because these people are wealthy and they're famous and that you see them as good people, that means they are good people, or that they're obviously ideal partners in a marriage. But that's not necessarily true. They're just human beings, and you tend to see it as like, oh no, man, they're um, you know, well. You know, there's celebrities. We, you want to be married to a celebrity, and actually, like, celebrities often are the worst for going in and out of relationships, aren't they? Because they have super fans who are, like, fucking hot. <laughs> and you're like, yeah. To be honest, I always thought marriage was a little overrated, though. I think it's a bit, like, gone with the time, you know. Seems like it's a bit old school, if you ask me. Yeah. I feel like if we left, lived in a world where everyone could get equal pay, and we all could just work hard, get a good job, you know, a lot of people would suddenly conveniently not want to have kids anymore. There's no real useful profit to them. But, you know, it's just my opinion. I, I don't really want to get married or have kids. I've never been a fan, but I do work with kids all the time, so you can imagine. And I work with women all of the time as well, so yeah, yeah you kind of get a bit like, yeah, this is what your life could be like. <laughs> like, like, oh, they pay me to be here now. <laughs> like, so, uh, yeah. Let's leave it with being paid to be here, shall we? Obviously, it's a lot more kids than you would normally have in your house, but still, I've been around some people's houses to teach their kids in the past, and I don't like a lot of things about houses that have kids in, like the wet wipes everywhere, the shit all over the floor, not the literal shit, like the crayons and kid stuff all over the floor, and the... Um, the snacks everywhere and the snack packages everywhere because the kids just got all and just thrown the trash on the floor and they're like, now Tiffany, what do we do with the trash? I don't know. Well, you need to learn, Tiffany. You know, and you're like, oh. can't have nice things, but I have a cat. I can't have nice things anyway. Everything's covered in hair or he knocks it off the side and breaks it. 
but you know, he's a lot cheaper. Yeah, I'm not very good at cohabiting either. I get like frustrated over really tiny things. I get annoyed with people really easily. I like having my own space and like peace and quiet when I need it, you know. Quite introverted. I need my batteries of socializing. I often feel tired after a while of extended socializing and I need time to just sit and do something quiet like read or play video games. I just need a time to myself, you know, and just listen to music or a podcast or something and just be like, you know, this is nice. <laughs> this is something I have control over a little bit more. Um, especially because my work is very high socializing, high action, high speaking, a lot of speaking, a lot of orating and lecturing. It means that you kind of want a bit of I'm just going to have a nice long shower, bake my own bread, listen to some mayhem, <laughs> burn some incense, light some candles, you know, get a good satanic vibe going, got my black candles out, just going to have a nice rest, burn the sandalwood incense, you know, just going to have a chill time, man, just going to have a chill time, and yeah, I feel like we're screaming kiddos around. It's bad enough for my cat. My cat, if he forgets that I'm in the house, if he forgets I'm in the house, and like I'm in the bathroom or something, and I come out, and he doesn't expect me, he come, he goes and shouts at me. He's like, <laughs> and I'm like, what? And he's like, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. He thought I left several times, because I sit on the toilet and then flick on Instagram like everyone does, or something like that, reading some dumb bullshit that doesn't matter, and then uh, like 10, 20 minutes goes by, and then I come out, or I'm watching a YouTube video or something, and he's forgotten I'm there, <laughs> and he's pissed off I'm still here, you know? <clears throat> uh, yeah, so that's bad enough as is. <clears throat> And sometimes he punches me in the face because he's annoyed with me. He likes the quiet too. Whenever I do this for too long or I'm having an online lesson, he comes to shout at me as well because I've been talking for too long. So it's the same kind of thing. I think he's quite introverted too. Looks like this guy tucked his denim jacket into his denim jeans, and that, that's a worrying kind of combo. Hey, here's a question. Is it better to have light demo, light demo, light denim match with dark denim, or to just have the same shade of denim? If you're gonna go double denim. You just shouldn't go double denim, unless you've got one that's like a patch jacket and it's going over the top of the leather. Which is like the only time I ever double denim. And that's really only for metal shows. So I've got the old school shit going now. Just feeling my age, I've got my patch jacket now. Getting to the metalhead middle age. <laughs> you've got a patch jacket. You're hitting metalhead middle age. You're no longer the edgy kid who just has all of the merch and the like hoodie with like your favorite band on it and like the uh, maybe you know you, you, you really bought in and now you've got patches and you don't know what the fuck to do with them to you. Ah fuck it. I kept getting these patches free with special edition albums and like copies of Metal Hammer and then I just got this huge back one so I thought it looked nice. Fuck it, I'm gonna make a patch, <laughs> patch jacket. Cut the sleeves off this old uh, denim jacket that one guy gave me, who was much older than me, and said, Oh, I don't want this, it's like three sizes too big, so I'm like, Fuck it, I'm gonna make a patch jacket, it'll be a little project of mine. But yeah, you hit that point, you hit metalhead middle age. You get two. Yeah, <laughs> you, know, you know how it goes. The more, the more patch jackets you got, the more cuts you got with like, um, various metal bands. I've started a black one now, which has just got all of the heavier shit on it. Like, it's got all the black metal, black and white logos on it. 
and uh, my blue one's got all the stuff that's like new wave, like maiden and like uh, priest and a bunch of softer stuff, like easy DCs, easy top kind of thing. It's got mo big motorhead back patch and stuff. That's my like classic rock one or classic rock metal. No, it's got maybe there from Metallica and a few carcass patches because I don't know where else to put them. Black label and uh, aim and a mouth and that. And then I've got this other one now that I'm starting up and it's got like uh, Death and Death Angel and like all of those kind of bands on it. I say it like those two are in any way a similar genre. And a few carcass and like stuff like that. <coughs> <coughs> Uh, it was a really funny story about me uh, buying patches at Graz Pop. Oh, and I got a tool patch as well. Um, <clears throat> when I was at Graz Pop, uh, I was buying patches. And this guy next to me, I'm just picking up patches. He's not looking at what I'm getting. I'm flicking through trying to find some uh, an obituary patch, but I couldn't find anything. I pick up a ghost patch, because I like ghosts. <coughs> and a lot of people I know don't like ghosts, but I like ghosts. And I was just like, oh yeah, 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 I'll just pick up this ghost patch. The guy next to me starts going into a tirade to his mate. He hasn't seen the patch that I have. But he's like, going into a tirade with me because there's a big ghost banner. He's like, oh man, ghost, or oh, fucking ghost, oh that's so shit. And I'm just sat there like, I don't really want to have this conversation with this guy. Because there's one of those ones where like, for some reason, ghosts get a lot of shit. <laughs> and he's like, Hey, they wrote catchy songs and they're kind of fun. Who cares? It's better than baby metal. I don't know, a load of baby metal fans go, Fuck you, baby metal are good. It's like, whatever, it's up to you. I don't like baby metal, but they exist and I let them do that. It's better than Black Veil Brides. And then everyone goes, Fuck you, Black Veil Brides are good. No, they're not. <laughs> like, shut up. Kerrang say, they, say they're good. They're crap. <laughs> Fuck you. I'm never going to turn my back, <laughs> turn around on that, until someone shoots me a good Black Veil Bride song, and then I'll be like, oh, I was wrong. But whatever, life's a rich tapestry. Some people like Black Veil Brides and baby metal. I like Ghost. I can't talk. And this guy's ripping into Ghost, and I'm just like, I'm just going to pick up the other purchases I have, which just happen to be like my Death Patch, my Judas Priest Patch that I bought and stuff. I'm just going to put the ghost one underneath it so that I can just... Because I'm like covered in tattoos, drunk, with my big patch jacket on with the motorhead on the back and all of the heavy metal and the carcass and shit. And like, you know, I'm on my way to see Immolation or something and I'm like, this guy's ripping into ghosts and I feel like it's a bit weird for me to be like, oh yeah, I listen to heavy metal. And ghost! But it's like, whatever, you know, like... If I just listen to one subgenre of one genre, I'm gonna blow my brains out of, out of sheer boredom. You gotta change and do lots of different shit, you know? Some people don't get that. But like, you know, up to you, man, it's up to you. He looks like he's wearing a boiler suit from this angle. With his wooden shoes there. One of my mates, who will remain nameless, had shoes that were like that. The kind of weird brown leather and suede shoes that that guy was wearing for that. And uh, one night he was out drinking with us and he got really drunk. I'd already went home, I think, by this point. And he was dancing with a girl in the bar and he was sick all over his shoes of these. And I think it was just a... Uh, convenient vomit onto these shoes because like I don't think he liked them <laughs> like you know I don't think he liked them <clears throat> but he was just trying to wear them out and try and get rid of them and be like oh no we're gonna have to throw out these shoes they're terrible they stink of vomit now and he was just trying to get rid of them but like the wooden booting shoes they looked just very strange but like like I could talk to him my fashion choices. Anyway, that's the... That's the bit. And we'll come back and do Okami once my uh, laptop's charged, maybe. Or we'll just do a pigeon playthrough. We'll see how it goes.